Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial for Day and Age by Julian Lash. As always, let me start by rolling the Patreon credits and today I can welcome Paul among the new top tier patrons. If you want to support the channel and gain access to a load of extras, then click the Patreon link to see what I have on offer there. If you want to express your support without monthly fees, then there is a PayPal donate link down there as well. Day and Age is a song by Julian Lash and it appeared on his album called World's Fair, which was released in early 2015. But the version on that album isn't one most people are looking for, or at least so it seems. The version that is being mentioned the most is the live version Mr. Lash played for Collings guitars, and that is the version I will be taking apart over the next few weeks. If you have watched this version already, then you maybe have guessed that large sections are being improvised on the spot and if you watch other versions on YouTube you will see that Julian Lash can take the tune basically into any direction he wants improvising large sections while using the chord sequence as the foundation in this first part we take a look at the intro and the first two verses and within those parts most of the improvising is going on in the intro. You get a few tasty bluesy licks before launching in a long and winding chromatic run that starts on an open string and ends up all the way on the 19th fret. After that verse 1 and 2 are very similar and once you can play verse 1 you should be able to make short work of verse 2. However you do get a glimpse of what is to come in the next video by means of a slippery lick all the way at the end of verse 2. That sort of gives you an idea what to expect in the next verses. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's get started with part 1. Ok so let's get to work on the tune. The guitar is in standard tuning and all you need is a pick or a plectrum and you're good to go. Let's have a look at the intro first. As I mentioned in the introduction, this song contains a lot of uh, improvised sections and the intro is probably improvised in full. So I'm going to go over this rather quickly. Most of it are rather simple licks uh, except for the long run at the end and we'll focus on the fingering of that one uh, in particular. So here we go, the first few licks. Basically a very simple blues lick. Hammering to the 12th fret, playing the C sharp and then moving down and playing the C sharp again with a hammer on. Quick slide to the F sharp coming from the 8th fret on the B string really quickly down. And then one of those, uh, straight up one of those really fast sliding licks. That's a really big slide, so going from the 8th fret on the B string all the way up to the 14th fret and back to the 8th fret. So, and that's not easy to time or, or to uh, navigate in the beginning, so really take your time trying to get that distance programmed into your fingers and then try to speed it up over time. And a few really quick licks in triplets. Nothing difficult there. Fifth fret with the middle finger, ring finger, sixth fret, index finger, fourth fret, and back to the middle finger. Then sixth fret, back to the G string. Sliding down from the fifth fret to the fourth fret on the D string, to the second fret. And at last, switching to the A string, third fret on the low E string, sliding down to the 2nd fret, to an open string. Again, don't pay too much attention to the exact techniques, this was an improvisation. I think I added a few hammer-ons and pull-offs as well, in the teaser video, just because it, I think it works better for my playing style. On to the next part. Plain sixth, if you ever played one of Tommy's songs, Tommy Emanuel songs like we do on the channel a lot, then this will be no problem at all. Again, a really quick slide from the eighth fret to the seventh fret, this time again using a sixth interval to an open E string. So I'm using the pinky and the ring finger to an open E string before adding in the rest of the chord. then 
you put down a full A triad, open A string, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and you slide down with the pinky from the eighth fret to the seventh fret again. So from the G natural to the F sharp. Sliding down fret by fret, so chromatically down to the fourth fret to the third fret or in terms of chords from A to G sharp to G before adding in the thumb over the side of the neck to form an F sharp chord. Now if the thumb over the side of the neck doesn't work for you then just lay down a full bar. So works just as well. Uh, in, in this fingering using the thumb over the side of the neck it's possible to leave that chord ringing out at least in part if you go for the, the full bar, then you, there will be just a split second of silence there. And then we're off into the long uh, chromatic run. Now, first I'm going to play everything up to this point really slowly, because the chromatic run is, is a chapter in itself. So here we go, from the beginning. two harmonics in the first part of the explanation. So just lightly touch at the 12th fret. So we end up on that F sharp chord. Now it's off into the chromatic run. Let me play it one time for you, really slowly. a lot to take in. First, we're starting on an open B string and we're just, the, the first part is mostly playing chromatically, but to, uh, Tommy, uh, Julian Lage adds one small detail, which really makes a difference. He goes up, so he starts open string, first fret, second fret, third fret, pinky on the D sharp fourth fret, and he leaves the pinky there ringing out as he transfer to to the next part of the lick. All the way up to that point that high D string or that high D sharp note keeps ringing out. Rest of the fingering is while keeping down the, that, that fourth fret, ring finger, index finger, then ring finger, middle finger, index, index down to the first fret, ring finger, small bar across two strings to get to that F sharp. And then when you reach that first fret, that is when the pinky finally lets go. Again, in this part there is a small detail that is really unique. I never uh, saw this anywhere else yet in uh, some other songs. To uh, to, I'm going to say Tommy a lot. This is one of the very first tutorials I'm doing that is not Tommy Emmanuel music, so that name will probably pop up quite a lot. Julia starts on the first fret, middle finger, second fret, third fret, ring finger, pinky. He moves up with the pinky to the fifth fret, and then he leaves that note ringing out as he transfers to the open D string, which is the same note. But if you listen to uh, him playing the lick, you can always hear that those last two notes are always overlapping. So up to the fifth fret, overlapping with the next string, and the exact same thing to the fifth fret, overlapping with the next string. On the G string, we're only moving up to the fourth fret, but again, overlapping to the next string, again to the fifth fret, overlapping with the high E string, and now we're moving up 
5th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret. And that is where a new section of the lick starts. Let me play the th uh, this part all the way, the chromatic lick, all the way up to this point. should, in terms of timing, view this as, the, as a new first beat, a strong point on which you start the next part of the lick. I hope that first section is clear, so the fingering is always the same, always going from the first fret all the way up to the fifth fret, starting on a new open string, doing the same thing, and only on the G string you're moving up to the fourth fret before transferring to the B string. Next part of the lick. winding lick with a lot of uh, triad sections in there so you're starting you're ending up with pinky on the seventh fret pinky middle finger on the fifth fret ring finger sixth fret on the b string middle finger to the g string fifth fret to the index finger on the fourth fret barring the uh, index finger across two strings sorry forgot that so e string b string laying the index finger across the G string and the D string, rolling to only the D string, make sure those two notes don't uh, ring out across each other, so as you transfer to the D string, lift the finger, middle finger on the 6th fret on the A string, ring finger on the 7th fret on the low E string. And then the same trick, laying down the ring finger across the A string, again on the 7th fret. Index finger on the 5th fret, a small F triad, pinky on the 8th fret on the A string, 7th fret for the ring finger on the D string, index finger 5th fret on the G string, moving to a little a B major triad, 9th fret on the D string, middle finger 8th fret on the G string, index finger 7th fret on the B string. triad, B triad, ring finger, 10th fret on the B string, a uh, G string, sorry, then sliding with the pinky from the 11th fret to the 12th fret on the B string, playing the same note on the high E string, and then it's a lot of jumping upward. Now, first gonna play the lick up to this point again. F triad, B triad, 11th fret, octave down, 14th fret, octave down, and then harmonic at the 19th fret. That's the intro lick, but that's, that's quite a lick there at the end. Let me play that last part, that starting from the chromatic lick, all the way up to the top, really slowly, so you can get a good last look, and then we're heading into the first verse. Here we go. Leave that fourth fret ringing out. Ring out across two strings. Again. There's one thing that I find really difficult. So the first thing to do is to make sure that that seventh fret, once you end up there with the pinky, that is the new first beat for the next part of the lick. Dividing this section into two parts like that really helps to get it into your fingers and to give you a sense of direction of where you're going. The second thing is leaving those strings on the fifth fret ringing out across the next open string 
is really difficult for me to do on, uh, let's say, a, even a little bit a higher speed because I have done those chromatic exercises a lot uh, to get my technique going and it's so programmed into my fingers to separate those notes that I will almost automatically start muting uh, those that previous string before me moving on to the next string, as you maybe saw in the teaser video as well. So. Just see how this works for you, but I don't think it's it's really a big deal if that one note gets muted as you move to the next string. But I did include that little detail just to show you how uh, Mr. Lash plays it himself. That was the intro. Enough work in that one section alone, but the next few sections are a little bit easier. Let's have a first look. <laughs> to the next verse already. First, let's have a look. There are a few chord shapes that will always pop up throughout the song from beginning to end. The first one is a voicing for an E major chord. Open E string, pinky seventh fret on the A string, ring finger sixth fret on the D string, index finger fourth fret on the G string, and then two open strings. Moving to what I think is can be viewed as an E chord with a major 7th with a D sharp in the bass and an added 6th degree, ring finger 6th fret on the A string, index finger 4th fret on the D string, pinky 6th fret on the G string and you will sometimes need the, in the middle finger on the 5th fret of the B string as well. Moving to an A major 7th chord with a C sharp in the bass, bar across uh, five strings and sometimes you will even need a bar across six strings because you will need that low G sharp bass note as well. Adding in the pinky, ring finger, middle finger on the seventh fret, sixth fret, fifth fret and then the bar takes uh, care of that fourth fret on the high E string. To a B dominant ninth chord, sus4. Just a bar across the second fret going from the low A string to the top E string. So those are uh, a few chords that you will see pop up a lot. And then there is the A chord with an added ninth in there. So just an open A string, ring finger on the seventh fret, middle finger sixth fret and then again two open strings. With those chords you can basically play the first two verses all the way through without adding too much uh, other stuff in there. So let's have a look at that first verse. Tom, uh, Tommy, here we go again, Mr. Lash or Julian, starts with that E voicing. Julian just slides this up, going from one fret down towards that E chord. And then goes straight into some hybrid picking. So plectrum and middle finger, Moving to the next chord, again, plectrum and middle finger, and again, plectrum or pick and middle finger. For that A chord, you do need the bar across all six strings. And the alternating bass line is slightly muted as you would do in a lot of, for instance, Tommy Emanuel or Chet Atkins songs. Lightly with the palm of the hand resting on the bass string, making sure that you get that muffled or muted sound on the bass strings. To the B chord, again, hybrid picking. Just a soft strum down with the plectrum. So only the first two notes in that bar are hybrid picked and everything else with a plectrum. Two, an open E string. We're going for another voicing for an E chord this time. 
ring finger 6th fret on the D string, hammering from the index finger on the 4th fret on the B string to the 5th fret, getting a unison sound with the open E string. Just playing that little triad there, giving you a C, uh, sorry, an E chord with an added 6th. Now the C minor chord sort of looks like a C minor chord with, with the E down below as the root note. This gives you an E chord with an added 6th. Do the first chord again. And again, those same chord shapes you play around with. One small detail, most of the time the melody note is played on the 4th fret and uh, Julian does take an effort or does make an effort to m separate those two notes. So they don't often don't sound or they are not connected in terms of sound but they are separated. So he will release pressure just really quickly to separate those two notes. strum on that A chord. Same part as on the, the previous section. To an A chord with an added ninth, voicing we already saw in intro. Let me play those first four bars back to back. the next section. A lot of triads there. Sliding up to the 12th fret using a little bar across the high uh, B and E string and the middle finger. Going to the 13th fret with the middle finger, 12th fret with a little bar. Bar with the ring finger across the 9th fret. The same voicing on the 7th fret as we just played on the 12th fret. quite wide voicing, ring finger 9th fret on the D string, index finger 6th fret on the G string, pinky 9th fret on the B string. And then you have two options moving to the next chord. Either you leave the index finger where it is and you switch to the middle finger and the ring finger, or you leave the ring finger and the pinky on the same string and you just move down adding in the middle finger. So either this or this. It's your choice. So here we go, that full lick. And again, often uh, Mr. Lash makes an effort to separate those two chords, cutting the first one just a little bit shorter and leaving the second one ringing out. Maybe just one tip before we continue. Uh, Mr. Lash actually by the end of the song swaps out this voicing and he just goes for this chord and moves it down two frets. So the same chord, the exact same way, just two frets down, which might be a lot easier for people with a bit smaller hands who find this really hard to fret right away after those few big jumps. You could also just play this. going straight for that chord instead of this chord and which makes it a lot easier to move down. You will actually have to play this if you follow the tablature all the way at the song. So Mr. Lash actually adds in this variation himself as well. On to the last. To a B13 chord with a sus4 in there. Repicking the top string, picking the B string, moving down two frets to the index finger. And again to one of those A chords with an added ninth. Three, four. You can add in a few strums before going back to. Just 
long chords, we know the intro section already. Ending up on a full E chord. And maybe because it's the beginning of the song, these chords are actually left open. There are no fills in between. Three, four. And, and maybe a few light fills here. little blues lick to close out the first verse with. Let's quick look at that blues lick, nothing too difficult. Hammering on to the second fret. Ending up on an open E string. One more time, really slowly. Into the next verse. Let me play that first first really slowly, then we'll continue straight away into the next section. first one time all the way through. Maybe one of the most challenging licks is all the way right there at the end. But let's have a look at the rest of the verse uh, first, because a lot of it is similar to the first verse as well. Here we go. So we start out with the same melody. Exactly the same thing. Little variation there, the melody is a little bit different. Hybrid picking. Again hybrid picking on that G string and E string. Fingering is just second fret on the bar, middle finger on the third fret, ring finger on the fourth fret. Same fingering as the first time for that E chord. And then a little special trick, a chromatic pull off going from the seventh fret to the sixth fret to the fifth fret to the fourth fret and you're ending up on a bar across the fourth fret. And what you are aiming for is to do that pull off. And by the end, by the time you reach that fourth fret on the bar, you should try to play the bass note at the same time. So as you pull off to the fourth fret, that is the moment where you add in the bass note. That's the basic movement. The tricky part in this is make sure you actually completely finish each pull-off before initiating the next. When people start practicing these kinds of licks and they bump up the tempo too quickly, then they will actually be performing two pull-offs at the same time. Often you will end up doing the pull-off on the pinky and the ring finger at the same time, removing them at the same time, giving you a very sloppy uh, sound as a result. So make sure you completely finish each and every pull-off before initiating the movement for the next. And once you speed it up, then that separation should still be present. 
you're not finished with this lick, so that, that is not easy in itself. Then Julian adds the full chord again, again, the A major seventh chord with the C sharp in the bass, but he doesn't strum it, he actually performs a tapped harmonic. So what you're doing is you're going to aim 12 frets higher, so that makes for the 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th fret and you're going to slap your finger diagonally sort of as a mirror image of this chord shape up here. So across those four strings aiming for this sort of shape going from the 14th fret all the, sorry from, from the 16th fret all the way up to the 20th fret there. If you hit the exact right spot with enough force you will get a harmonic sound. Julian Lash, he performs this with the index finger. So he swaps over the plectrum to the middle finger and, and performs that slap with the index finger. I tried this, I think, about a million times and the, the amount of times I dropped my plectrum is, it was too many to count. So I just find it a lot easier performing that slap or that tap harmonic with the middle finger. So the exact same thing, but just slapping it flat with the middle finger across the same rough area. So performing the exact same technique but with the middle finger instead of the index finger and just aim for the same area we talked about starting from the 16th fret on the high E string to the 20th fret on the D string. That's about the area you need. Let me put that little section all back to back all the different techniques. Then he adds in another strum, of, uh, so a bit of extra filler on, on that case. So after that harmonic, it's just a strum going up and a chord tone. Basically the same section, but instead of that second time hybrid picking, just again a strum with the plectrum going down. Again, to one of those A chords with an added ninth. Let me play those eight bars back to back. And then the next section is the exact same thing as the first verse. except for maybe a slide instead of two pick notes. Everything else is exactly the same as in the first verse, but now we are uh, heading into the first real challenge. Uh, really cool lick, a lot of sliding around the whole neck. Let me give you a first look and then I'm going to try and explain to the best of my abilities. Two, three. A really cool lick, but let me do that really slowly for just a second. So you're ending up on that big E major chord. Two counts, you leave that ringing out. Two, three, and on the fourth beat, all triplets, open E string, third fret, fourth fret using the middle finger and the ring finger, two, three, hammering on, might seem strange, from the second fret with the index finger to the pinky on the fourth fret, and sliding to the seventh fret, two, three, the first part. Then quickly sliding from the fifth fret to the sixth fret as a little embellishment. Classic blues lick. So sorry, using the middle finger to the index finger, fourth fret, ring finger, sixth fret, middle finger on the fifth fret. Two, three. And then Julian uses the ring finger, I think it's a little bit easier with the pinky. See what works for you. You're sliding from the seventh fret to the ninth fret. The 
ninth fret back to the fifth fret, there's the exact same note. And this is what gives that lick that, that really slippery and uh, smooth effect. The same thing on the B string, sliding from the seventh fret to the ninth fret, and then heading with the index finger to the fourth fret. Again, the same note, same thing. And then a really big slide. He starts somewhere from around the 7th or 8th fret all the way up to the 12th fret. That's the full lick. Now that last note should ring out across the bar line because you will be adding another bass line, another bass note, sorry and a chord right after that. So that note really has to sing and really has to sustain across the bar line into the next section. One more time, really slowly. One, two, three. That is already the, the first part of what I think is the solo section. Um, well, let me try to count along, giving you the exact timing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So that 12th fret lands right in front of the beat and the bass note lands on the beat. One more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So, and on the first beat, you put that low E bass note underneath that high singing 12th fret. Quite an ending to the second verse, but let me play it all the way through one more time, really slowly, and then it's on to the next section, which is, I think, the start of more or less the solo, uh, but that will be something for the next part of the tutorial. Now, let's have a look. straight into the next part. Have fun with these first few sections, get this into your fingers and I will be back next week with the solo section and I guess that will be two parts or maybe even three parts as well. See you there, bye bye.